time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What My Line, brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the world's number one electric shaver, the Remington. Now, let's all play What My Line. Now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular Broadway columnist, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, one of the great figures of show business, writer and comedian, Fred Allen. And on my left, ladies and gentlemen, a young lady who told me uh, only tonight that she knows the meanest baseball pitcher in either league. This pitcher is so mean he won't even walk his dog, Miss <laughs> Lorraine Day. <laughs> Publisher, columnist, and husband of my friend, Phyllis Cerf. <laughs> Bennett. <laughs> All right, thank you, Elaine. I, I knew it would come to that. Now, on my left, the man who would have covered the atom bomb test if there had been an atom bomb test, the husband of Kit Daly, John <laughs> Francis Daly. <laughs> and I don't want any trouble with the women in my house, husband of Kit and father of Buncey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Uh, once again tonight, we have some very nice people who've been kind enough to give us the better part of their Sunday evening, and they've brought with them some interesting occupations with which it is our dearest hope we will stick this panel. Later on, we'll have a famous guest challenger before the panel, but right now, I think we better let the experts meet our first challenger whose line has to be spotted. So will you sign in, please, sir? Jacob, Jacob Foss. Is that right, sir? <laughs> well, sir, I don't have to ask you where you came from. If I remember correctly, I saw you in Las Vegas this past week. Well, it's <laughs> nice to have you here in New York with us. Shake hands on that again. Tell you what we do. I don't know whether you're familiar with the program. Uh, the panel, we feel, needs all the help we can give them. <laughs> and so, would you... Uh, be good enough to take a walk down there so they can get a better look at you, please. Uh, yes, sir. What? Hello. We didn't that follow John before. from Las Vegas because you didn't pay his bill, did you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Foss, if you'd come over here, please, and sit down next to me. Uh, the panel knows it well. We've dispensed with wild guesses, but uh, we still feel it's a good idea to let the folks at home and those who are here with us in the theater know what your line is before we put the panel to the test. So let's let the folks at home know what your line is but the panel will have to work. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sir, do you know how we score this operation? Yes. You know how we score this? Yes, Every sir. time you say yes, no, sir. I flip a card. Yes, sir. All right, fine. Then there's nothing left to do but tell the panel that you are salaried, and uh, let's begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Foss, I feel that that little hint that Mr. Daly threw out so charmingly and gratuitously about having seen you in Las Vegas was designed to lead us up the garden path. Uh, are you something other than uh, an employee of or denizen of the gambling establishments out there? I hope so. <laughs> yes, our guest is something other than an employee or denizen of. Are you something other than an, an atomic bomb expert of some type? Yes. Have you some perfectly ordinary occupation? I would say this. It's ordinary to the degree that it's an occupation practiced in the 48 states of the United States. It is not in, indigenous to Las Vegas. No, it is not indigenous no. to Las Vegas. Do you by any chance work for a non-profit making organization? <laughs> We try to make a profit. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think we'll have to admit, Miss Dorothy, that in the terms of reference that we use on the program, our guest does uh, work for a non-profit making organization. Well, is it connected with any government? Yes. Uh, is it connected with any branch of the armed forces? No, no. 
One down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Well, do you deal in services of some sort? Yes. And you work for the government? Yes, sir. Do you work, is, is that the place of your work? Do you, do you perform whatever it is you do uh, at Las Vegas? No, sir. Two down and eight to go, Miss You're Day. very fortunate. <laughs> well, Lanza lost his voice there. You can lose anything. <laughs> do you deal with both men and women? Yes. Do you happen to deal with money? Uh, yes. We all do, and, you know. Do you work for the Treasury Department? No. Uh, three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Force, you did go to Las Vegas, is this correct? Uh, for to watch the atomic experiment? Yes, sir. Uh, did you possibly represent some state or city when you went there? Yes, sir. Would it be a state? Yes. <laughs> You're doing great, Bennett. Don't get discouraged. I'm not discouraged. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Force could be a very important fellow, weren't most of the gentlemen who were invited there from states? Weren't they governors and mayors? Would you be a governor by any chance? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now all you got to do is governor what? Governor Force, eh? Well, anybody knows that. It's <laughs> not me. <laughs> uh, you are at present a governor. Yes, Mr. sir. Mr. Force. Is it a state west of the Mississippi? Yes, sir. Is it east of the Rocky Mountains? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the, uh, the northern part of the United States between the Rockies and the Mississippi? Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, Send for Randon McNally. I wish I could have. <laughs> Would it be any, any chance be um, Minnesota? No, sir. That's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. I was never good at geography. I passed. Mr. Allen? Uh, is it Nevada? No, sir. Five down and five to go, Miss Day. Would it have uh, a north as part of the state? Like uh, North Dakota? <laughs> No. Is it North Dakota? No. 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 <laughs> well, it's South Dakota. South <laughs> now, actually, we played a trick on you. This is Governor Joe Foss of South Dakota, but his middle name is Jacob, and we thought if we threw that middle name in there, that might just oh, throw you off a little bit. Easy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Dorothy. Uh, John, isn't Governor Foss famous for something else? He sure is. It's right here. Member of the, the holder of the Congressional Medal of Honor, and which there is nothing more to be said. So, uh, there are two things that I'd like to take special note of because uh, the governor has always maintained his relationships with the military as a governor of a state. Of course, he's concerned with National Guard principally, I guess, aren't you, Joe? You've got your own units out yes, there. Yes, sir. And he uh, was one of the people who gave impetus to the recent National Guard test, and it was a rather remarkable demonstration of what uh, you could call our second line of defense can do if called upon. In something like two hours, 85% of 350,000 men were in their places armed and ready to go, and in some instances, these units from the Air Force and uh, the Army were ready in, in a matter of minutes to go to work, and he gets some of the credit for that. But there's something else he gets credit for. He sat up on that hill in that desert in Nevada with me for <laughs> night after night after night, and I don't know why he's unthawed as yet. <laughs> yes, uh, John, I think you're fortunate that the atom bomb didn't go uh, off near Las Vegas. You might have had a fallout of slot machines for three days. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I must tell you, I, think, I don't think I got a chance to tell this to the governor. Uh, some of the fellows in our fraternity, journalism, came up to cover the, uh, the Tournament of Champions at the Desert Inn Country Club, and one of them was the redoubtable Vincent X. Flaherty from the Los Angeles Examiner. And we were all sitting around bemoaning the fact that we go up and sit on this hill at 28 above zero, you know, all night, and why won't it go off? And Flaherty says, somebody forgot the matches. <laughs> <laughs> so that takes care of that. Well, Joe, I think we gave him a little more trouble than I thought we would, and you're a good compatriot on a hill, and the uh, state of South Dakota should be proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Nice to see you.
A wonderful man came by one night, and I was shaking like an aspen tree in a high wind. He says, what's the matter? You cold? I feel fine. Well, he comes from South Dakota. I guess I come from hot country. All right, let's see what our panel can do with another challenger. They've made a very good beginning. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Margaret. Margaret Oldham. Is that right? Oh, yes, I remember. I saw you in New York. <laughs> that worked pretty good. Where are you from, though? We'll be real honest. City. You are from New York yes. City? I did very well, then. Will you walk down and let the panel get a closer look at you, please? Oh, is that it? Is it How are you? Is it Mrs.? Mrs. All right, Riddle. now, <coughs> Mrs. or Miss. Mrs. Oldham, will you come here and sit down next to me? And we will let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know what your line is, but the panel is going to have to work. So let's let the viewers at home know, and uh, then let the panel go to work. All right. You know how we score this operation, Mrs. Owen? I believe I do. You do? Fine. Would you speak up just a little bit yes, more sir. for us? Thanks, and sit close. Be comfortable, but sit closely to the microphone. All right, then, Mrs. Oldham is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Fred Allen. Yes, uh, I notice Mrs. Oldham spells her name O-L-D-H-A-M. Brings up Jack Benny's name to me. Uh, <laughs> old man. <laughs> I mean, just a... And that, of course, has nothing to do with the thing. Now, what, what this, whatever it is you do, Mrs. Oldham, uh, do you enjoy doing it? Yes. You do enjoy doing it. Does it require any uh, skill or experience to enable you to do whatever it is? Yes. It does. Yeah, I would think so. I don't want to mislead you because we tend here to get rather technical when we speak of special skills. Uh, I'm not as well versed in this art or practice or science as I might be, but I would think you'd have to have some special skill to do it properly, yes. Well, uh, may I ask uh, if an average person like me uh, would it be possible to learn to do whatever you do? Would you yes. be what, Fred? An average person like me, I assume that I'm average, would it be possible for me to learn to do whatever Miss Oldham does? No. If I applied myself? Well, I've got to have a concert. Miss. <laughs> 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 Mrs. Oldham has pointed out a technicality which had passed my mind. I will discuss the technicality later with you if you would care to raise it. But Mrs. Oldham says, no, you can't learn to do what she does. That's one down and mine to go, Miss Day. Could I learn to do it? Yes. Uh, would I wear a uniform of some no. kind or special costume? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Seth. Mrs. Oldham, may I assume from your answers that <clears throat> the work that you do is connected with women. Yes. Uh, you do something with the female sex. Yes, sir. Uh, are they uh, in better shape after you've done it? <laughs> yes. Now, what do you mean by better shape, Bennett? <laughs> well, would they consider themselves uh, better looking or more presentable Maybe. after yes. you've uh, done the work? Uh, do you have something to do with their health? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Oldham, uh, even though Fred couldn't possibly do what you do, might he enjoy watching you do it? <laughs> Mrs. You... Oldham says he might. <laughs> well, of course, I know Fred better than she does, and I know what I'm thinking of. Uh... <laughs> Uh, do you have anything to do with uh, ladies who are apt to be prettier than most? Mm -hmm. uh, than just the average? Yes. They're, they're noted for glamour or something in that area. Yes. Uh, are you connected with the theatrical profession in its broadest sense? In its broadest sense, I would think so, wouldn't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> well, uh, do you have anything... <laughs> Do you have anything to do 
let me put it this way, would you ever be found in a dressing room where there were showgirls or chorus girls or performers of some kind? Yes. Are you in the wardrobe woman field? Yes. Do you work for a union? Yes. Well, are you found backstage at some place where there is a presentation of some kind? Yes. Do I have to find out where it is? No, actually, I'm not quite sure. I'm found backstage as oh. a part of the backstage elements of Of, of some place, either a, a theater, a nightclub, a circus, or some type of That's uh, right. Now, all you have to theatrical do is event. pin it down, you know. You are from New York. Are you also working in New York at the moment? Yes. Are you connected with a Broadway show? No. No, and I think this may be a little bit unfair to you, Dorothy, because it was more pinning down the occupation which you were in, you see, than the place Oh, itself. I thought I'd established her as a wardrobe mistress. I did, too. But Well, actually, uh, the wardrobe mistress... Dresser? There it is, but for that we'll flip the rest of the card. Sure. That's right. Actually, Mrs. Oldham is a dresser, and I'm not sufficiently acquainted with the theater to know if the two are synonymous, are they? Yeah. Same thing? Uh, yes. Well, Where women, women are involved. Dresses, Same sort of thing. All right, then. Mrs. Oldham dresses chorus girls at the Latin Quarter, and that's why you can't learn to do it, Fred. Uh, I once went to the Latin Quarter, and as I remember the girls there, they didn't require any dressing. <laughs> Fred? I know, uh, I know Louis Walters, who owns the Latin Quarter, and he may arrange things worse. <laughs> things keep dreaming, keep dreaming. And may we thank you, Mrs. Oldham, for a wonderfully yeah, yeah. interesting few minutes on our program. Thank Thanks you. for being with us on What's My Life. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends and colleagues on the panel are blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Well, as you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we get right down to the general questioning, and we will stick to the new rules. You will ask one question at a time in turn, and we will move uh, clockwise. Let's begin the general questioning, then, with Bennett Cerf. Well, that warm welcome usually means somebody from show business. Are you a yeah. representative? That's right. Are you a singer? Yeah. Are you in the motion picture field? I have been. Uh, do you have a television show of your own? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Did I detect <laughs> a, uh, an English accent in your answer? Quite probably. You can't tell. Maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> Not that time, <laughs> but before. Miss Gilgallon? Have you got a hit record in the jukeboxes? I beg your pardon? Ha have you all got, <laughs> got a hit record in the jukeboxes? Well, I've made records, but I haven't heard any in a jukebox. <laughs> <laughs> Two down a date to go, Mr. Allen. Are you in the theater currently? In the theater? Yes. You're uh, playing some show? Uh, not at the moment, no. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Day. Do you sing popular music? Uh-huh. Mr. Sir? Are you English? Yeah. Miss Kilgallen? Uh... Well, are you Vera Lynn? Vera Lynn? No. no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Are you Miss Gingold? No. That's five down and five to go, Miss Day. Have you been in this country long? Oh, not very long. Just a... You still have your accent. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll give a bow on that, too. Six down and four to go, Mr. Serp. Did you ever sing a song about an aspidistrid tree? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Uh, Are you Gracie Fields? Gracie Fields is right. a little touch of an English accent and we lost another round. Well, panel, let's see what you can do with uh, a fast final round. Uh, let's have another challenger. Will you sign in, please, sir?
Harvey Lefebvre. Is that right, sir? Well, now, Mr. Lefebvre, we've only got about four minutes, so we'll dispense the hike down. You just let the panel take a quick look at you, and you come over here with me, will you please? And, uh... Lefebvre? Yes, Mr. Lefebvre. And with our uh, new rules, we'll just immediately get to let the folks at home know what your line is, and the people here in our theater, and then the panel will have to go to work. And now... Do you know how we spell this thing, sir? Would you sit forward for me? Because it's a yes, little hard sir. for a microphone to pick you up otherwise. John, you neglected to tell us where Mr. Lefevre is from. Well, I'll tell you he's from Forest Hills, New York, actually. And he is self-employed. And uh, we'll begin the general questioning with Miss Lorraine Day. Do you deal in services, Mr. No. Lefevre? Well, uh, as a self-employed man, we would say no, because there's nobody to hire his services. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. There's a product connected with what you do, Mr. Lefevre? Yes. Is it a product that is in common usage? Yes. Is it used by both sexes? <laughs> yes. As is, as a utilitarian product, the benefits of its use uh, certainly are available to both sexes. But is it used primarily more by one sex than another sex? No. Well, and here we go, huh? How many <clears throat> Yeah, I would think you're right. Yeah, I would say two down and eight to go, Benny. We'll give you a no on that. It's a kind of a thin area, but I think you'll understand when we come through. That's Miss Kilgallen. Would you describe the thin area briefly for me, John? <laughs> the thin area is that very narrow strip between uh, the area of questioning as it was posed by Bennett and the area okay. of reply as it was made from this chair. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, it's thinner than we thought. <laughs> do you go about in your work, Mr. Lefebvre? Do you go about in your work rather than staying in one place? Uh, principally in one place. Oh. So we'd have to give you a note. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Is this product that, uh, that you work with, is, is it found in the home? No. <laughs> Four down and six to go, Miss Day. Well, I know some weird homes. It could possibly be. You don't, you don't know a home weird enough to hold this one, though. Well, is this an expensive product? Yes. Is it a product uh, that is... Could I hold it in my hand? No. Mm. Five down and five to go, Mr. Serf. Is this product ever sold to the United States government, Mr. Lafayette? Yes. Would it be used for any defense project? Yes. Yes, it could be used in, the, in that general area. Would it be used in a war? In what? In a war. Would it be used in a war? Yes, it would be yes. fundamentally necessary to its prosecution. Would it be used by land forces rather than sea forces? Yes. Has it anything to do with the airplane industry? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it made of metal? Yes. Does it go along the ground? Is it anything like a tank? Well, to the, no, I don't, not like it. It goes along the ground as uh, differentiated from going on water and up in the air, yes. But we'd have to give you a no on the tank. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. He doesn't have that bomb that didn't go off by any chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got... Is it, a, is it a conveyance of some sort? <laughs> yes, could be described as a conveyance, don't you think, Mr. Lefebvre? The people, oh, people can ride in it if it's working properly? Yeah, people do ride in it if it's working properly, yeah. Does it have uh, wheels? Yes. Yeah. Uh, is it used uh, to transport uh, uh, soldiers or ammunition? I'm sorry, Fred. I'm going no. to call the question back because we have run out of time, and I will think you were getting close to it. Actually, Mr. Lefebvre sells second-hand locomotives. Oh, yeah? Second-hand? Thank you. 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 Thank this is John Denny saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, Fred. Good night, Lorraine. Good night, Bennett. Get those giants to do a little hitting, will you, Lorraine? <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> Sixteen innings and they won today. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. Transportation for What's My Line is arranged through American Airlines. American Airlines, the country's leading airline, now serving the United States, Mexico, and Canada. 
This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to watch Remington Rand's other television program, Masquerade Party, on another network. Check your program listings for time and station.